Yo, what is happening guys? How are you doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel and let's go ahead and discuss today's Nintendo Direct. So today is September 4th, 2019, and I just finished watching the Nintendo Direct for today that was announced very surprisingly just yesterday. And I say surprisingly, I mean, we all pretty much knew and expected a September Nintendo Direct, but it definitely happened a little bit quicker and earlier in the month than I expected and a lot of people expected. And they also gave us only that one day notice, which sometimes Nintendo sneaks those in there, but usually they try to give us two or three days. But either way, this is what happened. They gave us a day. Today, the Nintendo Direct happened. It was 40 minutes, a lot of excitement, a lot of hype. I made a video uh, yesterday kind of discussing some theories and predictions and thoughts about what might be going on. There were there were some leaks and some hints and stuff about things that were supposed to happen. And all in all, like I said, there was a lot of excitement. And so now that I've seen the Direct, how was it? It was pretty good. It was just good. I think that that's what I would say about it. Not a super hype direct, not filled with tons of surprises and megatons and, you know, game reveals of things that we necessarily didn't know or expect, especially when you consider some of the leaks and whatnot. Um, I overall walked away from the direct feeling like it was just, it was fine. It was just good. Now, full disclosure, I think that part of the reason I saw it as just a, an okay direct is because this direct really did not have much for me. It just didn't have much for Rob, you guys. That's a thing that happens sometimes, and you know what? That's okay. I'm not the kind of person to say, oh my god, Nintendo, you didn't make every single announcement just catered to me, and so therefore it's bad and no one should like it, and it actually sucks because I said so. That's not really how I think or try to approach things. I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot to get me excited. There's a couple things, but there really just wasn't much for me. But there was some fairly significant stuff discussed, mostly games that we had already heard about, really not a whole lot of surprises. Um, and they mostly discussed games that we already knew about, and a lot of them were very, like, RPG and JRPG heavy, stuff very focused on, like, Pokemon and Animal Crossing series and franchises that I don't personally play or get excited for. And so I think that for a large variety of gamers out there, there was a lot of great stuff to get them excited. For me, there was a couple of pieces of news about games I already know about that I'm excited to play, and then one or two other surprises that I thought were pretty cool, and that was really just kind of it. But again, just because a Nintendo Direct didn't have 100 things just for me, doesn't mean that it was actually bad. It was just average. It was fine. So anyway, I already said that. Um, if we kind of just recap some of the stuff that happened, some of like the bigger moments are the ones that I found the most interesting. Uh, first thing right off the bat, Overwatch. It's coming to Switch. This is crazy. Now, obviously, this was also leaked this morning and tons of publications and websites ran with it. Like in their headlines, in their thumbnails, Overwatch leaked for Switch from today's Nintendo Direct. Like everyone was putting that everywhere. And it's like... You know, when I discussed it a couple of days ago, it was a news story about an Amazon posting for a case. And so I think that was a little bit different because that was like a possible hoax, not sure what's going on. It didn't it didn't have the same kind of leak quality. But since then, a Nintendo Direct was then confirmed. And so suddenly, once you're leaking stuff directly out of a Nintendo Direct, an actual story and headline and trailer reel, gameplay reel from that show, that's when I think you need to be a little bit more careful about it, you know? Like, it's it's hard to be super careful, but that was just negligent, and I think that that was very unfortunate the way that's happened. And, you know, I used to do that stuff a little bit more myself, and I kind of have, uh, I've kind of learned over the years to try to be a little bit more careful with it. Like I said, the Overwatch case didn't fall into that category as much for me, but this was just really crazy. So, anyway, the point is, Overwatch is coming to Switch. All throughout all of 2017, I was saying Overwatch is a game that should come to Switch, and I think it will. I said it throughout that whole year, and obviously I forgot about it all last year, and I think most of us did, and now suddenly it's coming. So I thought it looks really good. It's very impressive. Chalk up another impressive third-party port running on the Switch. Games that people said could never operate on the Switch. Blizzard themselves said it was challenging back in 2017. But here it is. It looks like it's got maybe like an extra cell shading effect kind of on it. I'm not quite sure because I'm not really familiar with Overwatch. But either way, it's really exciting to see. It's coming out, I think, October 15th, I believe. So it's only a couple of weeks away. That was pretty cool. Now, obviously, we have to talk about Smash Brothers because there was three significant things that came out of the Smash Brothers kind of info today. Uh, the first one is the fact that Banjo-Kazooie is actually playable today 
which is very exciting. And it also means as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to finally download the Fighter's Pass. Because uh, Joker didn't get me excited, the Dragon Quest guy didn't get me excited, but Banjo does. So I gotta have Banjo, I gotta have his stage, the music, I need it in my life. <laughs> and so I'm gonna get the Fighter's Pass today. So that was pretty cool, stealth drop of Banjo, which a lot of people sort of saw coming. Um, the other big thing is, I guess we'll get to like, I guess the biggest thing. They confirmed the new character, and it turns out all of the leaks and rumors and information were true. It was an SNK character, and it turned out to be Terry from Fatal Fury, which is what a lot of people th thought. I definitely thought that he or Mai had the best chance at showing up, and it turned out to be Terry. I love kind of the reveal with, like, the decades and all the different Nintendo consoles, and they go to SNES, and then they step to the side to show Neo Geo, and it was like, oh, snap, it's an SNK person. It was all true. And uh, so I'm sure people are freaking out and some are upset and some are happy. You know, I, I'm not somebody who's excited about it. He's not a character um, that super appeals to me. I did enjoy Samurai Showdown back in the day, but it doesn't get me really hyped. But it makes sense. I think it's cool to see a company like SNK represented. And, you know, games from the Neo Geo, that's pretty cool to see, the, to see any representation in Smash Brothers. So to me, he belongs. The series belongs. SNK characters belong like it all makes sense and so I know people are upset about it but I'm telling you guys it just works and then the other huge reveal is that there are more fighters than just the initial five coming to Smash Brothers that is crazy to me that is so insane because we knew we had one more to go we've already had four of the five and I've been praying for Travis touchdown I believe he's coming to this game and then they're like well it turns out there's gonna be more fighters like they basically just tricked us and lied to us you know I mean, there's a chance that they changed their mind throughout development, but it was like, ah, oh, it's going to be five characters and stages, and now it's going to be a lot more, which probably means they've been making a ton of money, and they want to keep making money. So, smart on them. They're going to sell a second Fighter's Pass, I'm sure. And so that means I feel even better about Travis Touchdown showing up. So, in that respect, I feel really good about it. Now, like I said, everything else they showed today really wasn't the most exciting. There was almost nothing else for me that got me really, really hyped. There's a couple of games that I'm going to run through that are significant. For the most part, it was just catching up on just a bunch of random stuff that just really wasn't appealing to me specifically. But one thing that they did show was Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast coming to the Nintendo Switch in September. Is it the 24th, I think? So like a couple of weeks from now? Oh my god, you guys. Finally a Star Wars game on the Nintendo Switch. It does suck that the first and only Star Wars game is going to be a 20-year-old game that doesn't look like they did anything to, like, upgrade the visuals or the gameplay. That's unfortunate. But you know what? I ain't complaining. A, because it's a Star Wars game, and B, because Jedi Outcast is a great game. Yes, it's very old, but I have a history with it, so I know I am going to enjoy it like crazy. And I know that Limited Run Games was supposed to be doing a pack of, like, 15 old-school Star Wars games on the Switch, but I haven't seen anything about that, and one of them was Jedi Outcast, but now Jedi Outcast is coming by itself, so maybe something fell through there. Either way, very excited to see it. Oh my freaking god, put Star Wars on the goddamn Switch, please. It's time that this happened. The other thing that they talked about was Doom 64. Everyone wanted Doom 64 when all those Doom games showed up a couple weeks ago, and it turns out that they're doing it. It was the one thing I had spoiled to me. My buddy Brian texted me when I was working, right before the meeting I had to go into, because he was watching it live, and he's like, oh my god, Doom 64, and I was like, damn it, Brian, I'm not watching live. So he cooled off, and we kind of joked about it for a while, so I did have that spoiled for me. But you know what? It looks great, man. Really exciting to see that game coming to the Nintendo Switch. Something curious about it, you guys. I'm just I'm just going to bring this up and put this out there for everyone to chew on. Doom 64 is launching on the Switch on November 22nd. That's the same day that Doom Eternal is supposedly launching. And Pete Hines didn't say anything about November 22nd being the same date as Doom Eternal. Which means maybe my long-standing worry about that game is true... And maybe the Switch version isn't going to launch on November 22nd. Maybe it's going to be delayed till sometime in 2020. I think there's a good chance that's going to happen, you guys. I've said it from the jump. They've, they've never doubled down on November 22nd for the Switch release. It said coming soon. Ever, ever since they gave us the date of November 22nd, it still has said coming soon for the Switch. But it's given the date for the other versions. I thought that was suspicious. And it's still not confirmed to be delayed, but I feel like this Doom 64 release date thing might be leading us to that. So I don't know. That's just, 
it's just something I want to point out, like I said, to put it out for you guys, for you guys to think about it. Um, what else here? Oh, so we did get a Wii U port today, and it was the one game that I didn't put on my poll this morning, which I feel very silly about, and it's Tokyo Mirage Sessions, man. Shin Megami Tensei Crossfire Emblem. They called it Encore Edition, I think, and it's just... Uh, it's, it's the best way to do it. They're bringing this Wii U game over, but they're adding extra content, you know? Like, it's not really a game for me, but it's cool to see that they're adding new stuff to it. Like, to my knowledge, they didn't do that with, like, Donkey Kong. Well, you, I guess you got Funky Kong, but you know what I mean. Like, significant content. They didn't do it with Donkey Kong. They didn't do it with, like, Captain Toad or Hyrule Warriors, I don't believe, or New Super Mario Brothers. They just put, you know, existing content together but they didn't have new stuff. And it seems like Tokyo Mirage Sessions has new stuff and new characters. And so that's pretty cool. I might pick it up solely because it's the only Wii U port that I don't already have and haven't played. So I might get it for that reason. It doesn't overall excite me, but it was neat to see. I was hoping for a Pikmin 3 or Wonderful 101, but instead they're giving us this game. And honestly, people say this was a good game that deserved a better shot. It came out at the end of the Wii U's life when it was already too late to have a successful sales run. So I think it's pretty cool that this game is getting a shot. Now a crazy reveal that I'm very excited for was Deadly Premonitions 2. What the hell? I cannot believe they're making a sequel to that game. It's a game with a cult following known for being a very, very terrible horror game. Like, I believe it was 360 PS3 gen. Very, very bad. I've seen some Let's Plays, like, watch the game grumps and stuff. It's very bad. Um, but it's got a cult following. Some people say it's better than you think, and I kind of like crappy horror games like that. I like good horror games like that and the crappy ones. So I'm very excited to see a sequel, even though I don't love that it's using the cell shading graphics. I think that's kind of a cop-out, but whatever. So very exciting, and then they confirmed that today you can download the original Deadly Premonitions on the Nintendo Switch. Oh my god, so freaking cool. I will definitely be picking that sucker up, because I've never played it. Even though it's right up my alley, never played it. So very excited to see what that's like, and very stoked on Deadly Premonitions 2. So now let's get to the last two major things I want to cover here. And uh, the first is going to be just, I can't believe it, you guys. Super Nintendo games for the Nintendo Switch Online. Oh my god, this is crazy. And I know we've been talking about it for like a year. People have been guessing, rumoring, theory, theorizing, kind of leaking, but also kind of not leaking. Super Nintendo games on the online. People have been talking about this forever. I've made several videos about it, even just recently. Um, and it's, it's true. It's all true. It's actually happening. I believe they said tomorrow it goes live. Uh, very cool. It's hard not to be excited about this, you know. I did state in my video a couple days ago about it, my whole thesis statement about SNES games on the online was that I don't think it's enough to save or perfect or fix the online service. I think it's a nice boon to give people, and it definitely helps increase the value in a lot of ways, but I think they need to truly fix more of the features and functionality. So this doesn't solve the issues with the online service, however, it does help, it is nice, and I am very excited. Now, the last thing they showed was very exciting, and it actually does appeal to me, but I don't think it was the most hype, one more thing kind of moment. I thought it was a very curious choice. There was a lot of rumors and discussions about Monolith having something new for the Switch or new to show at this Nintendo Direct, which is very exciting. Are we getting another Baton Kaitos game? Are we getting another Xenoblade game? Are we getting a new IP? Are we getting a who knows what? And it turned out to be a remaster of the original Xenoblade Chronicles coming out in 2020. And this is, to me, both really cool and also kind of just okay. Again, because I think it's just, it's, it's just a game we've already played. It's a game that's been out. It wasn't a great hype last reveal. But as somebody who's not a big JRPG guy, one series I do love is the Xenoblade games. And on top of that, my favorite of the three is the original because that game, I think, surprised me. I went into it thinking, I just want this really cool-looking Wii game just to support the Wii, not because I love JRPGs, and when I played it, I did fall in love. That game is amazing. And seeing this, like, remastered version, they definitely have upped the visuals here. The character models looked really good. Seeing that they're doing this and bringing this sometime next year is so exciting, you guys. And for any of you guys that haven't played it, because I think a lot of people jumped on with uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X and then more people with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because of the Switch. I think that if you go back and play this original game and if they remaster it properly, oh, it's so good. The characters are the best. The story is the best. 
The combat isn't as developed as the other games, but the world is amazing. The two giant titan gods that you're on and traversing over them and the visages of them in the background, I love it. They tried to emulate that with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because of the titans and all that stuff, and it was cool, but weirdly it didn't achieve the same effect for me, and I don't know why. I think that they just they just delivered that kind of art-directed style a little bit better in the first game. And it's even more impressive in the first game because they were working on significantly limited hardware. That's two generations ago that this game released, you guys. Not even last gen. Two Nintendo generations ago this game came out. So I'm really uh, glad to see Xeno, uh, Xeno, uh, Monolith, not Xenoblade. I'm glad to see Monolith working on stuff and see them working on more Xenoblade projects. I would probably still have preferred a, like another Xenoblade game or a new IP or whatever, but this is still very exciting and it is very cool and I am absolutely 1000% going to pick it up and I am going to replay that game because I love the first Xenoblade. So those are the big kind of interesting reveals to me, you know, the stuff that either appealed to me or that I just found interesting and significant. And you know, that was like seven or eight things I just went over. So yeah, there was some cool stuff talked about and shown today. Just because I don't think it was the most amazing direct. Again, it wasn't bad. It was fine for what it was. Also, as I predicted a couple of days ago, even before this Nintendo Direct was even announced, they did talk about 2020 games. And even their tweet said that this was going to focus on 2019 games. But I said yesterday too, I was like, yeah, they're going to throw some 2020 stuff in there. And they talked about quite a few 2020 games today. And that makes sense. You have to do that because you're near the end of the year and you've already got four massive games coming out. Luigi's Mansion, Pokemon, Zelda, Damon X Machina. Like 2019 is stacked between now and the end of the year. We didn't get Bayonetta or anything for December, which is a shame, but there's enough stuff to play. So obviously a lot of their focus had to be on next year's stuff, which included Xenoblade, uh, Deadly Premonition, uh, of course, Animal Crossing they talked about for a while. That's 2020. No, no more heroes. Oh, I'm so sad about that. But uh, either way, it was just kind of cool to see them talk about 2020 stuff. Actually, heck, even Tokyo Mirage Sessions. That's a January 2020 game. That's not even coming out this year. That's next year, too. So it was interesting. Um, that's the Nintendo Direct. Those are my thoughts. Like I said, it was good. It was just fine. It wasn't great. It was just fine. So... Um, that's what I thought. What did you guys think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you middle of the road like me? What were the stuff that got you the most excited? What were the announcements that you enjoyed the most from today's Nintendo Direct? And how do you feel about Terry coming into Smash Brothers? I really want to hear how you guys react to that. So, no Metroid. I knew it wasn't going to happen, guys. No Metroid. So, either way, with that, this video is a wrap. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I'll see you next time on another video.